In order to understand the distinction between political liberalism and comprehensive liberalism, we need to look at the concept of autonomy. This is a key concept for Rawls and for a good number of liberal thinkers. Autonomy means the right and ability to control one's own life. Notice, right and ability. It does not just mean that other people don't directly interfere with you. It also means that you have to have real choices and you have to be in control of your own choices. One way that I like to explain this is to think of it in three stages. Right? I'm going to present them as historical stages, although I don't think this is the real history, right? but it's a way of illustrating the point. So stage one, people started to say, people need to have individual freedom. That is, other people shouldn't be able to tell them how to live their lives. So let's look at freedom to choose your occupation. This type of freedom, or this type of liberty, would mean that nobody could tell you, nope, sorry, you weren't born into the right family, you can't be a baker, or you can't be a landowner, you can't be a merchant or a government official or whatever it is. Right? So people can choose for themselves which occupation they want to enter into. Now, some people came along in the second stage and said, well, that's not all that great. Right? As one person famously put it, that means having the right to sleep under the bridge in Paris at night. And they didn't see that as much freedom at all. So they argued that in order to be free, you need to have a real range of opportunities. Okay. That means, among other things, you need to have access to enough money to live. You need to have access to education and other things. So here's an example. I talked to a friend once who said, you know, we didn't really have freedom of occupation in the town I grew up in. Basically, your choices were starve, leave town, or work in the one factory at the town at the wage that they were going to give you. And I said, well, you, couldn't you go to the next town? And he said, yes, and you could work in the one factory in that town for the wage that they were going to give you. So in his view, they didn't really have a meaningful freedom of occupation. Now, the third stage is a little bit trickier. This one says that even if you are you're given a range of options and allowed to choose. You also need to be in control of your own choices. So more or less, this means you have to be able to make rational decisions about what you want and how you, go, you can best achieve it. So this requires things like education, right? and not just memorizing a bunch of facts. It requires the ability to, have, to do critical thinking, to investigate options, things like that. So the idea of autonomy is a pretty strong concept. It's not enough for, to just say, well, you're not being physically prevented from doing these things. Right? You also have to be able to take charge of your own choices.